Let's talk about vitamin K. Vitamin K is one of the fat soluble vitamins. Do you remember the fat soluble vitamins? Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E, and vitamin K. You can click the link on the top right corner to check out the playlist where I covered almost all the vitamins. All right, so let's get back to vitamin K. The forms of vitamin K. If you remember well, if you watched other videos, we talked about active and inactive forms, right? But for vitamin K, there is no uh, pro-vitamin. There is no inactive precursors. The active form is called vitamin K hydroquinone. Activation occurs via the enzyme epoxide reductase. If there is a mutation in the uh, VKORC1, that's vitamin K epoxide reductase complex subunit gene, uh, there will be a reduction of vitamin K epoxide, and this will result in deficiencies of vitamin K dependent clotting factors. We will talk about them, don't worry. Right, next we'll talk about the sources of vitamin K. Right, so uh, vitamin K is, uh, there is K1 and K2. Uh, from leaf green vegetables, you get K1. And from eggs, dairy products, and meat, we get vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is also synthesized in small amounts by intestinal flora. This is very important. Uh, I will tell you more about this uh, when we talk about uh, uh, vitamin K deficiency in neonates. Functions of vitamin K. Right. So vitamin K acts as a cofactor or coenzyme for gamma carboxylation of glutamate residues on vitamin K dependent proteins. So it's involved in number one coagulation. Right. So maturation of factors like factor two, that's prothrombin, factor seven, factor nine, factor ten, protein C, and protein S. Right. So these are, are vitamin K dependent clotting factors. Right. So this is the pathway. Uh, and this is uh, again where warfarin targets, right? Um, uh, this blood thin, right? We'll talk about it in a separate video. It's beyond the scope of this. Uh, presentation right i just want you to remember uh the vitamin k dependent clotting factors you can say two plus seven is nine not ten two plus seven is equal to nine not ten right so factor two seven nine and ten depend on vitamin k right uh the next one is uh in bone formation Right, so there is uh, osteocalcin, right? So the, uh, this osteocalcin is found in the bone, right? So they are osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are bone-forming cells. So in absence of vitamin K or in presence of warfarin, right, in this case, there will be abnormalities in osteocalcin, right? So uh, the, the proteins will be undercarboxylated, if vitamin K is present, there is normal osteocalcin and the proteins are well carboxylated. Right. What causes vitamin K deficiency? Right. So number one is uh, liver failure. For example, liver cirrhosis. Number two is fat malabsorption. Right. If you remember, I mentioned that vitamin K is one of the uh, fat soluble vitamins vitamin a d e and k they are absorbed at the same time as fats from the diet right so if there is a malabsorption uh, it means e, e, they will be deficient of uh, these vitamins prolonged uh, broad spectrum antibiotic therapy right so if you uh, give a patient antibiotics like continuously because i said small amounts of vitamin k are synthesized from the intestinal flora right so if you keep on giving the patient antibiotics uh, like broad spectrum they will be killing off this normal flora therefore there will be a deficiency uh, in vitamin k 
right? Another one is vitamin K antagonist. These are drugs, for example, warfarin, right? So one more time, liver failure, malabsorption, uh, prolonged broad spectrum antibiotic therapy, and vitamin K antagonist, warfarin in particular. Deficiency of vitamin K, right? So this is a continuation, right? So we, we've seen the four reasons, right? Uh, liver failure, uh, fat malabsorption, prolonged broad spectrum antibiotic, vitamin K antagonist, and the next will be a neonatal deficiency, right? This is a specific reason, right? So the neonatal intestine is sterile. It means at this point, there is no flora to synthesize vitamin K, right? Vitamin K does not cross uh, the placenta, so you don't have any way of it getting into the fetus or into the neonate, right? Breast milk does not contain vitamin K, right? So the only way you can uh, get this is through uh, an intramuscular injection soon after birth. I will tell you more about it, right? So the neonatal liver is again incapable of synthesizing the active form of vitamin K. Remember when I mentioned uh, uh, liver failure, in case of liver failure, you do not have uh, this synthesis of active form of vitamin K. That's vitamin K hydroquinone. So uh, in case of liver failure, you have this uh, deficiency. However, let's continue. Right. So uh, this is another reason uh, why there will be a deficiency of vitamin K in neonates. Right. Clinical features of vitamin K deficiency. Right. First one is hemorrhage, for example, petechia, ecchymosis. Vitamin K deficiency, bleeding, that's a VKDB. Uh, in this case, you find uh, increased PT and uh, APTT, but the bleeding time will be normal. Postnatal prophylaxis, right? vitamin K intramuscular injection at birth. Right. This is how you treat this condition, right? This uh, vitamin K dependent uh, is called vitamin K deficiency bleeding, right? So um, after birth, postnatal, you give a one milligram of uh, this vitamin K intramuscular for 10 babies and 0.5 milligrams for preterm babies, right? So, okay. Uh, next will be toxicity. Right, so if you remember, we said fat soluble vitamins uh, usually cause toxicity if they are uh, being supplied in excess, right? But for vitamin K, it's very rare. It can okay, uh, as I just said, because of over supplementation, right? And the clinical features of toxicity um, by vitamin K include hemolytic anemia, hyperbilirubinemia, jaundice, and canicterios in infants. Therapeutic uses, uh, as I just said, this postnatal uh, vitamin K to prevent uh, vitamin K deficiency bleeding. And also you can use it in coagulopathy, right? So this is actually uh, in case of disorders in the extrinsic pathway of coagulation. What is that? Do you still remember uh, the coagulation pathway, right? So extrinsic is uh, usually, uh, you know, after trauma, uh, the uh, the tissue factor will be exposed, and when it's exposed, it will convert uh, inactive factor seven into the active form, right? So from this, uh, the pathway will uh, will continue into the what into the common pathway, right? I don't want to to say a lot of things because I already covered this. Uh, this is actually a screenshot from a video I made, so you can click the link on the top right corner and watch the video on coagulation thank you so much if you manage to stick around for this long i have no ways but to say checkmate you win